just need you to appreciate the music for a moment. Well, we're done with one monarch's journey, and uh, I think it's time to pick another one. Uh, we could use King Hethum, which is the last one that was added. He is a Miaphysite Christian feudal lord over here. Um, so we would be sort of in the Middle East again. I think that would be kind of fun. What do we need to do? Ah, build up Armenia. Number of provinces. Number of Mongols with 60 plus opinion. That's interesting. And lots of years of independency. I think we'll just go use that. Why not? So we will go for Iron Man. Iron Man, not the bronze. I mean, achievements are disabled. I don't even understand exactly what the bronze man is. I think they kind of wanted to unify the experience so you don't feel left out as much but we go iron man as it is uh usually done uh i should probably i fiddled around with these a little bit to try and get <laughs> a bit of a video on pandemics and i think i didn't really we'll put those back to standard rules so none of this is kind of Kind of going on. We are also not going to leave off the Aztec invasion. Or, you know, we leave it off. I, d I just don't like the Aztecs. I'm sorry. It's one of the weirdest DLCs. I once won against them, but... Uh. Alright, so off to our new King's Journey. Monarch's Journey, I'm sorry. Monarch's Journey. It's not just King's. And... I'm very interested to see how this will work out. So check what we got. Okay, we got this tiny, tiny, tiny kingdom of Armenia. It is truly and utterly, absolutely crazy. Crazy tiny. Oh man. We have a whole one vassal. There's another tiny kingdom we might be able to absorb. There's another tiny kingdom. Um, right, okay, check our ruler first. As I said in the last uh, episode of uh, Queen Jaja Aldur's Monarch's Journey, I will be trying to explain a little bit more again and talk about what decisions I make and why I make them. So every time you start a game of Crusader Kings, the first thing you want to do is get a bit of a feeling of where you are at in the world, what the rules are you're going to play under. So for now, we will check all the little messages up here. This one is... Set a crown focus. First thing we will do, set our crown focus in Eluch or Telich or wherever. And we have a few special minor titles to give out. We want the guy with the highest opinion of us. Oh, our father. Lovely. Our father is our subject. Okay, we don't give a court jester. That's fine. But Keeper of Swans will be our dad. Master of Force will be this man. Hunt. So this is actually just kind of playing like a duke. But we are a king. Uh, which is interesting. So court tutor should be someone with fairly high learning. Uh, we don't really have all that many great choices here. Maybe we get a better command out of this. Nope. Right as we start off. Let's load our standard filter to find men across the world to join us. So this is gender men. Married any. In prison, no. Ruler, no. In diplomatic range, yes. Join court, yes. My religion group, my culture group is adult, yes. Uh, doesn't matter what house they are. This is my first filter to try and find the men in the world who would be willing to join the court. Because that way you can sort them by how good they are at things. Then invite them to your court and that way fill your court or rather your council with very competent people. Especially... Military leadership is something sometimes very hard to come by in your own realm. So you do want to have some people who are pretty good. You do have a court size limit, but by inviting some competent men and women into your court, you usually don't immediately break it. But we'll just have a few people join us. They might do something, they might not. Doesn't matter. All right, so the positions are fairly all right i mean our steward is absolutely terrible but we invited someone better 
Our spy master, our father is also not great. Is he good at anything else? Yeah, he would do a good marshal if we kick him out. But for now, we leave the court until the people join that we just wanted to join. Now we need a focus. We are good at diplomacy. And since one of our monarch's journey goals is to have Mongols with 60 plus opinion, nine of them. Um, I think diplomacy is actually a really, really decent thing to pick. So we will go for... I think for carousing. I'm not entirely sure if we... Maybe we can invite Mongols to carouse. So we'll... We'll try this. Um, we want to groom an heir. Because we don't have an heir outside our father. Our betrothed is 10 years old. <clears throat> Who are you? Your liege is this guy. So we will break that betrothal. Because we want to be able to quickly have a wife and start producing heirs. We'll check out... Okay, there's a whole bunch to choose from. So we look if we find someone who has a halfway decent trait. Quick. Mm, attractive. No. Okay, the quick one is too young. So we want someone who is around our age complimenting us diplomatically. So we'll, we'll mainly look for diplomatic women. Oh, lustful. That's not bad. She's a bit old. It's a bit old. There's a Mongol. Can we... No, we can't go for that. Let's have only adult women. And we want to complement our skills. If you look at this, our skill is 13, right? Because we have all these traits that contribute it. But our state diplomacy is calculated both on our own skill, added with the counselor and a degree of our spouse. So we want someone who complements our skills. Usually, you might want to look for someone to offset your worst skills. So our stewardship is just terrible. So we might also look for someone who's really good in stewardship. Might work out. She actually has pretty decent traits and she's a fortune builder. So has a fertility bonus on top of it. So she might be a good choice. She has a good diplomacy, good stewardship. She's a decent choice. And she is still fairly young. Young enough to bear us a kid or two. But we will look toward age for now. So who is 16? Because the ones that are young that might still improve on their skills here. Maybe we can find someone who is Mongol. Let's check for Mongol first. Mongol, Mongol, Mongol. There was at least one. Italian, Serbian, Italian, Polish, Mongol. There is the Mongol one. She's too old. Yeah, we're getting into too old territory, so we can't attack from this angle. We want a grey eminence. So we have two grey eminences to choose from. Or we take... Uh, the girl... That I already forgot that we looked at. <laughs> Which one was she? The one with high stewardship and everything else, her. Yeah, we'll take her. She's a bit far away, so the non-aggression pact with Poland is just not going to do all that much for us, but that's okay. We can press some de jour claims, and we can only press on this little piece here. We'd have to fight the whole kingdom, or rather the Sultan of Rum. We ourselves are, for our size, actually remarkably strong, but... We are still pretty weak. We have a bit of money that we should definitely spend on something. Um, probably increase our income and levy size. We'll leave the money for now. Let's check our neighbors. Who are we surrounded by? Okay. Can we get a patrol here? Yeah, nothing good. How strong are you? 2,000. Okay, this one will be our first target extort tribute from so we would have at least one who would join us in all our wars increasing our strength a little bit it's not ideal to attack 
but it could be worse. Uh, let's quickly check the mercenaries that we could hire around here. They're all very costly. So that's not an option for us. Our vassals are all very willing to give us troops, but there's just not all that many of them. So we could start to compose a book, which costs us all our money and doesn't really do much for us now. Uh, we can look for a court physician. Let's check our inheritance laws first. So we have Gavelkind, which divides the titles between children, which isn't great. It's, it's not really good for us. Um, what we want is either Primogenitor or Ultimogenitor. Those are the ones that we want. Um, these require a good amount of laws to be adjusted. We need to get over to late feudal, which we can actually do right now. That's not bad. Let's check this real quick. We need either late feudal or imperial administration for it. <clears throat> so we should go for this. And the council is not allowed to initiate voting on this, but they might be able to vote. Uh, let's check our council power. They are not empowered, so they don't get a say. So we can just switch this up to late feudal, allowing us in 10 years to switch to a better succession law, which is nice. So we'll, we'll do this first. This is important to ensure our later success in life. All right, so this also removes that vassals uh, may refuse that we interfere in their wars. And it's a pretty good middle ground. Feudal isn't the great greatest administration setting to live on. So what we need, really need to do now is we need to wait until we have reigned for 10 years. So by the time we turn 26, we are able to either choose Ultimogenitor or Primogenitor. Personally, I like Ultimogenitor a little bit better, meaning the latest, the, the youngest of your sons is going to inherit everything. Because oftentimes it's easier to kill the adult heirs than the really young ones. And you also get a longer playtime with your heir. Sometimes you have a 10 year difference, so you go through rulers really quickly on Primogenitor because if you have your first heir by the time you turn 17, then that heir is going to be quite old already if you die at, let's say, 76 or 67 or something. So you won't have all that many years of rulership on that new character. So I prefer Ultimogenitor for that reason. Right, so we initiated a marriage. Uh, we could recruit a four court physician. Let's check why we don't have one yet. There are no valid candidates. So we should check again for someone on learning. But I think I invited this man, so he might be able to become our court physician. He's a prince, interestingly enough. Right, so let's look around again. This guy is about on par with us. Could we declare a war against him? No, we cannot. There's the Kingdom of Jerusalem here, which is... How strong are you? Not very. Uh, strong enough. Enough. We could try and establish tributary states with these two. Cyprus and Jerusalem. I have a feeling that we might get in trouble with the Abayud. Ayub? Ayubit, I'm sorry, not Ayubit. Um, could just declare a war and make them into a tributary state. That's not not an issue. Let's check the Nicene Empire and the Latin Empire. The Christians around here are really quite weak, and we're one of them. There are a lot of little duchies here, but they're all part of the Nicene Empire. What's this? Sultanate of Rum. What are you doing? 
Okay, so time to start the game a little bit. Uh, but first we will look to the Mongols. So... Invite carousing. Okay, we can't invite someone who's not in our realm to carouse. But what we can try to do is we can find Mongols who might want to join our court. So Mongols are Altaic. Altaic. We are not Altaic. That much is sure. We are Byzantine. Alright, the Mongol Empire is fairly large. The biggest player on the map currently, I believe. So what we want... What we want is we want to find some Mongols to invite. So we will go for... Any culture. We will go for any gender. And we will look for... Sorting by culture, so it goes Armenian, Egyptian, French, German... Down here, it should start going Mongol. Uh, also, any religion group. Don't care about that, we just want... Uh, we need to sort by culture again. The other way around, Indian. Well, I think this is sorted by Italian. But it doesn't really look like... Doesn't really look like there are... Any Mongols willing to join us here. Look like it. Let's check his court. In a lesser union. Not in a lesser union. He is not going to come because we are a false religion. Okay. So how do we get these opinions? get these opinions of us up these are not opinions of us these are opinions of us we're an infidel to them we would need to become tengri Okay, so let's check the goals real quick again. This one continues as long as we play the dynasty. Also dynasty. Also dynasty. So none of these we have to achieve right now. We can just try and survive for a little while. And at some point we need to become independent again. So we might even submit to someone's rule early on and then later become independent. So we could say we want to swear fealty to them, which we can't. I ah, must be a neighbor or tissue liege. So I think the first real step would actually be getting ourselves some tribute down here. That would be decent. That way we have at least one ally, sort of. Um, and I think that's also, actually, the first thing we're going to do. How many boats do we have? Do we even have enough boats to carry all our ships? Yeah, we definitely have enough boats. That's no trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a war on him. Before we even start the game, raise all our troops and fleet levies. 
move everyone onto their ships. Combine our ships here. And then land on one of his. And thus we start a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. We were declared war upon by s someone over there. So that's bad. Uh, that's real bad. Instant war against us in a manner that we didn't want. So let's see how, how well this works out. A bunch of people joining us. So we'll make landfall. Ah, he's moving his troops onto our land. Meaning he will also fight these people. So this might work out better than expected. Let's see. We will want... Can we afford our own troops? Yeah, barely. Just barely. Okay. Uh, let's get our commanders in line. Do better than what we have right here. Not a lot better. A little bit better. We'll lead our own army, that's fine. Maybe we can find someone who's good at siege. No. Maybe we can find an architect. Also, no. Well, it's not scrolled entirely up, so... No. Okay. So now it's kind of a waiting game. We need to siege him down. And wait for them to kind of clash. So once we've won against him. We should be able to call him into the war. The Can't form an alliance here. physician still don't have enough people but so this is looking bad right out of the gate this is looking already bad we're in two wars we shouldn't be in so there's no way for us to have defeated them there's no way I have a lot of Archer and cavalry and heavy infantry and Oh, we're equally matched sort of but we wouldn't be able to win this But we might be able to win this still Not ideal. I was hoping they would clash But they are not Not yet, anyway. Definitely can't attack them here. We would sit here and hope for them to cross over the river into the mountains, but again, that that wouldn't that wouldn't win us the war. Oh, we're losing money rapidly. Oh, because our main holdings are sieged. So we could go for a white piece. Only losing us prestige, but that doesn't help us. Doesn't help us at all. So we need to win this quickly. I'm just going to speed this up because we're just waiting out sieges here. He can't really move anywhere anyway. So we'll see how it works out.
Luckily, the Muslims are quite slow. Okay, let's speed this up even further. It's not ideal. Oh, they actually banded together over there. My enemy is your enemy and everything, eh? Okay, 92%. Let's see if we can do this. To move. We want to be lustful, ideally. Oh. Um, we siege this down and should win. We're not engaging his army. Oh, a crusade for Egypt. Lovely. Ah, oh, no. We have, to we have to fight him. That's very unfortunate. Okay. So we won this war. Going to speed this down a lot. And now we will call him into our war as our tributary and he will join must join he doesn't have a choice um all right let's see okay but that's not a lot of troops however the muslims are losing a bunch of troops so this is getting a little bit more equal now let's tell him to attach to us we stand down our fleet, we don't need it anymore, and we hope for him to join us here quickly. We're not going to attack into the mountains, we're going to wait for him to come for us. Or are we going to walk around here? Let's let's do that. We're going to walk around. No, no, no. We're gonna walk around and besiege there. And he might want to attack us then. But we are not def- we're definitely not going to attack into the mountains. We are a little bit stronger than them, but not much. Not much. Our marshal died. Okay, uh, we should probably redo our council real quick as well. Let's do our council real quick. We put... This guy in. Our marshal will be... That guy. This man. This man. And he's pretty good. It's okay. Let us train some troops at home. Collect some taxes. There's nothing to convert. So we're just going to research cultural tech because we're not. And again, we speed up a little bit because this is just a sieging game again. We will wait and see what they do. Maybe one of those crusader armies walks through our land and takes care of him. Okay, I have a new plan. What we're going to do is we're going to borrow some money from Jewish merchants. Thank you very much. Next, we will go ahead, raise ourselves some mercenaries. The cheapest we can find. That also are actually somewhat of an army. Why are all your monthly costs always so high? We'll take the one with the lowest monthly cost, which is, I think, these guys. We add them to our own strength. We quickly defeat this army. We go from the north. We only get one negative modifier. Instead of two. We won't be able to keep this up long, money-wise. But we have to do it now. 
because otherwise we will be beaten here. Let's put in competent people, eh? Do that. Let's do competent. We shouldn't have both our heir and ourselves as leaders of the army. Only one of us should have the option to die. Okay. We will wait for this to go up to at least 90% before we move to attack. 100% would be better, but not just life. We might be at 100 once we arrive, so that's okay. Let's see this play out. Okay, we have a bunch of commanders, they have none. So far it's looking good. Our center is being battered. But we've beaten them. Uh, yeah, let's purchase the holy relic, that's fine. Good, we have beaten them, but not... Let's see, how many troops do we have left if I stand down this army? A bit over 3,000. We can't do this trick twice, that's my point. We can't do this twice, so... Ideally, we follow them, beat them once more, and then we stand down our troops. So let's see where they go. Going this way somewhere. here and over there all right so we are going to have a heavy malice on that attack but we need to do it now because we can't afford the mercenaries for much longer this is suboptimal in many many ways Don't go away. Okay. So now we should be able to stand down our mercenaries, which we can do at any point where we want to, and still have a stronger army. So they have 2,000 left, we have 3,600. So now, if we re-siege everything, we should be able to weather this storm. Let's take our own holdings first because that means money for us. The crusade was victorious too, so Egypt is now Christian. Lovely. We are going to go in minus. That's not something we can prevent at this point. Let's see how this works out.